Hey there, Booksy. Welcome back to my channel. I just came back from the library. So today's video is a library haul and I have seven books to share with you since it is Women in Translation Month and this coming week is going to be the Women in Translation Readathon. This haul is translated fiction by women heavy. So let's just get into the seven books that I picked up today. Matthew, who's one of the hosts from the Women in Translation Readathon, he raves about this Korean author called Kyung Suk Shin and so I got two of her books. I requested a few more but these are the two that came in this one is the court dancer and it is based on a true story it says and it's set at the end of the Korean Empire when a young woman who's a court dancer a French diplomat visits Korea to to have audience with the Emperor and falls in love with this young court dancer and brings her back to France there she becomes a translator for a fiction from her homeland and eventually she has an opportunity to return home but at that point, I suppose the political relationships are strained. The fact that it's based on a true story piques my interest. But also, I've heard a lot of really great things about this author. And so I want to see how she develops these stories. This is a huge book, so I'm not sure if I can manage this during a readathon. It is over 300 pages, but so is the other one. This one is also 330 something pages, I think. 350 pages and this one is the girl who wrote loneliness it's about a young woman who leaves home and finds work in Seoul um, Seoul Korea and she finds work in a factory while she attends school at night trying to fulfill her dream of becoming a writer and so we have the girl who wrote loneliness and the court dancer and these are both by Kyung Suk Shin and I'm looking forward to reading both I don't know if I'll get to either one of them during the readathon because again they're pretty big but this is a book with red on the cover that would definitely meet one of the prompts for the readathon and let's see these are both well, I don't know about this one. This one doesn't credit the translator, but this one has a female author and a female translator. So these definitely satisfy the prompts. So we'll see if I get to either one of those. So these are the first two books from the library. I also got two books from Elena Ferrante, who you know, she wrote the Neapolitan novels and I really enjoyed them. I read them late last year to the beginning of this year. And I have two books from her as well. This is another novel called The Days of Abandonment. And in this one, the author tackles the subject of depression and sadness. We have a main character who is not quite in love with the place where she's living. And so she's roaming the streets, feeling empty and going home and also feeling empty to the point where she becomes kind of agoraphobic, I think. She's spending her days inside, facing the four walls and not really feeling solace. Um, from the solitude and this is a pretty small book so this is one that I think I could read very easily in the readathon it's under 200 pages and Elena Ferrante writes characters really well I mean that was one of the really great pulls for me during the reading of the Neapolitan novels so I'm looking forward to reading this one but even more so I have this short book I mean it looks like a kid's storybook except Elena Ferrante, I don't think she does children's fiction. This one is based on a story about a girl and her doll, which if you've read the Neapolitan novels, you know that the catalyst for that story begins when the two girls lose their dolls. Well, one tosses the other one's doll down a cellar and they meet the neighborhood ogre and the rest of their lives pretty much start there. In this one, we have a little girl who's received a kitten and so she abandons her doll I think on the beach somewhere yep at the beach at night so she abandons her doll because she's now received a kitten and so while in this story we have an abandonment we also have an abandonment here so I'm not sure what the parallels are gonna be between these two books if I should read two books by the same author during a readathon but why not both of these are also translated by females her translator is Anna Goldstein and so I have those two books that are written by women translated from another language by a female translator as well then i have a charming little book called convenience store woman which is translated from the japanese the author is sayaka murata and in this one we have a young woman named kiko who 
works at a convenience store and uses the opportunity to observe the people around her. She finds joy and acceptance in the commonplace things that people who already have a strong sense of identity might resent. Like she likes the fact that she gets to wear a uniform. She gets to wear a uniform, not that she has to wear one. And <laughs> it's very interesting uh, synopsis and this book is blurbed by some authors who make me want to just pick this book up Ruth Ozeki who's the author of one of my favorite books a tale for the time being she has the blurb right here and on the inside we have Wiki Wang who's the author of chemistry which is a book that I read earlier this year and didn't love everything about it but really enjoyed Wiki Wang's humor and writing so this is also a very inviting book for readathon it's a small size and it's only 160 pages. Now compare that with this book. If you had to choose a book for the readathon, which one would you choose? I go with this one. <laughs> so we'll see. I think this is gonna be a book that I read during the readathon next week. I also am doing other things, of course. I'm also trying to get to a few books from the Man Booker long list before the shortlist is announced in the middle of September. So I have my first book that came in from the library and this is The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner. This one is set in a prison. We have a woman who is serving two consecutive life sentences, I think. And so this book is about following her into her going into prison and maybe some of the changes that are happening in her life based on this new situation. And I'm not a big fan of prison dramas like I haven't watched Orange is the New Black or any of those things I this is not a reality that I've really wanted to explore but it is long listed for the man booker and the booker really rewards books that take you into a journey take you onto a journey like this one so I don't know I think this might be a contender just based on the synopsis so I reserved it from the library and I'm gonna check it out but it's not translated fiction so it's probably gonna wait up for a week or so and finally it wouldn't be a library haul unless I had a non-fiction book to round it out and for that I have a historical non-fiction Hellhound on his trail by Hampton Sides this is the investigation of the manhunt for James Earl Ray, the man who murdered Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. And that's a subject and a topic that I've been wanting to know more about. And I'm gonna be doing a buddy read of this one with a person that I know in real life. So not a book to buddy read this time, but I'm looking forward to learning more about this story, maybe sharing it with you guys on here. And so those are the seven books that I picked up from the library today. I have translated fiction, a lot of it, and history, a little bit of it. But let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and you wanna talk about them. Um, I'm always up for buddy reads, as you know. And let me know if you've read any books by Kyung Suk Shin. She's a very influential writer coming out of South Korea right now. And of course, Elena Ferrante, who is one of my favorite Italian writers, I'm going to say, because I've read the Neapolitan novels, all four of them, and loved the series. So let's talk about these or any other books by these authors that you want to recommend to me. Let's talk about that in the comments. So we'll talk down there. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.